What is going on, guys? Welcome back to We Want Picks. My name is Jacob, aka the Freckle Salamander, here to bring you my quick pick video for UFC Vegas 97. But before we get into this week's breakdown, finally, the UFC is back. Make sure you like the video. Subscribe if you are new. We were so close to 30,000 subscribers. So make sure you subscribe because a lot of people watch these videos, but they're not subscribed. Like the video. And as always, go to WeWantPicks.com. Guys, it's only $10 a month that we've been running hot, man. I know me personally, I think I'm up money seven of the last eight weeks. So if you guys are tailing people on Twitter, you guys are tailing people on Patreon, and they've been losing money like crazy, not me, not the salamander, baby. We've been running absolutely rock solid hot. That didn't make any sense, but it's wewantpicks.com, and it's only $10 a month. And now is probably the time to sign up as the year ends and we come through strong. We got the sphere coming up. I'm just excited the fights are back. So let's get right into this breakdown. UFC Vegas 97 quick pick video of the entire card from stop to bottom. Stop to bottom. What the first up? We got Nathan Fletcher versus Ramoska. I'm not even going to try to pronounce that first name. This is going to be a pretty cut and dry fight. Nathan Fletcher wants to methodically get to the grappling, do what he wants to do on the ground. But in my opinion, I think he's going to have a hard time in his fights. He's a little bit just kind of slow, methodical with the striking, good takedowns, good grappling. And if he gets on this guy's back, he can finish about anybody. He is a very, very good grappler. But this guy Ramoska is kind of wild, though. This guy Ramoska is pretty wild on the feet. I believe that Nathan Fletcher is going to have a hard time getting those takedowns that he needs. What I do worry about is sometimes when you're a little bit too aggressive you can walk straight into a takedown. That could happen. But even when he is getting taken down, this guy Ramoska is very dangerous with those guillotines, those front chokes, and the scrambles. I do worry about a couple things. I already mentioned the overaggression into the takedowns for Ramoska, and I do worry that he's going to spend too much time on his back, and then once you're in your back and you're getting back to your feet, then you give up your back. But I'm going with the dog here first fight of the night. I'm going with Ramoska just because I like his aggression. I think he's going to be the more aggressive striker. And I believe he can kind of hold his own in the grappling, maybe wear get down a guy like Nathan Fletcher. Nathan Fletcher is probably the safer play because he knows what he wants to do and he's going to try to implement that game plan. But I like the aggressive striking and the aggressive grappling of Ramoska as a slight underdog here. I'm going Ramoska. Haven't played it yet. We'll see what these odds turn into. Let's move on to the next one. Next up, we got Andre Petrovsky versus Dylan Butka. And you guys, nah, I can't stand the Henzo Gracie team, right? That's what Petrovsky's got. We'll get to the main event here in a little bit. I don't think Andre Petrovsky's that good. I don't think Dylan Buck is that good. If you guys are playing Dylan, I get it, right? He can wrestle a little bit, but when he's coming into his fight against a kickboxer, spends five minutes trying to get a takedown and just like, okay, I'm going to head back to the hotel now. That's not a good sign, especially when before the fight, you're tweeting the new face of the UFC and you have five minutes of cardio. And that wasn't like a high pace back and forth cardio fight. He's just trying to get a takedown for st five straight minutes, can't get a takedown. And then just kind of gives up and he's done. He's out of here, right? I'm Andre Petrovsky has shown in his last fight, he's starting to try to put some things together, be a little bit more of a complete fighter, take his time. He should be the better wrestler. Probably is the better striker as well. The odds are a little bit crazy to me, but he is probably the better fighter. He is going to be my pick, but there's no way in hell I'm betting Andre Petrovsky minus 300. If you do... Good luck to you. I'm not doing it, but he is going to be my pick. He should be the better fighter. Let's move on to the next one. Daklin Amorim versus Vanessa Demopoulos. Listen up very, very closely. Because the last time I picked against a Brazilian, a beautiful Brazilian, right, was against was King Casey O'Neal, right, against Luana Santos. And I got a lot of blowback on that. Oh, my God. Guess who came through? King Casey O'Neal. I'm telling you right now, Jacqueline Amorim is a little bit fraudulent. You want to talk about her fight versus four foot nine hundred pound fucking Montserrat Ruiz? Okay, let's talk about that fight. 10 8 in the first round. What does she do to start the second round? She fucking pulls guard to start the second round of the fight. That's after the fight where she's against Sam Hughes, where she's gassing, and people are like, oh, her gas tank is looking better. No, the fuck it's not. She was just fighting a, a girl, Ruiz, who was just undersized and was able to, she was able to sweep her from guard positions. But she had such dominance in the first round, could even shoot a takedown in the second round, pulled guard, and was able to work those sweeps, right? But if she's not able to work those sweeps, guess what? She's fighting off her back the entire second round, probably fighting off her back the entire third round where she pulled guard again, right? 
You, uh, uh, Corey McKenna, she pulls her into an arm bar. She is very talented on the grab, but Vanessa not, but Demopoulos has been there, done that. She's a black belt as well, very flexible, knows what she's doing on the ground. I believe in my heart of hearts, Vanessa Demopoulos is going to survive whatever Jacqueline and Moran brings in the first round. And you want to talk about reach advantage and strike advantage? I don't give a fuck, right? Jacqueline Moran's not setting up these ones and twos and doing nice shots down the middle. She's getting sloppy out of the first round. Vanessa Demopoulos, the reason why she is winning all these fucking close decisions and you can call them robberies you can call them whatever you want the reason why she's winning all these decisions because she is constantly doing something moving forward moving forward off her back throwing elbows she is always looking like she is there to fight she is there to win the fight and the judges absolutely love that i understand the the accolades that amorim brings into this fight she didn't submit sam hughes she didn't submit Tiny Ruiz, right? She wasn't getting those submissions. She she got a nice little arm bar in Corey McKenna, but she's not this overly dominant grappler. I believe that she is going to gas. And Vanessa, Vanessa Nomopoulos is going to win that fight. That's why she is going to be my pick. One person is here to try and get pull guard and get Hail Mary submissions. And one person's here to fight. And that's Vanessa Nomopoulos. Let's move on to the next one. Santos versus Yizan. This should be... I, 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 I understand a little bit of the people that want to play the Yiz ah, fuck yeah, I don't know how to say his name, the Yiz uh, uh, money line or whatever, because these the odds probably have gotten away from us a little bit, Gabriel Santos, minus 300, he should be better pretty much everywhere, he's going to be the better striker, he's all gas, no breaks and there is a world where, like I said like with Ramoska, sometimes the when you're too forward pressure with your striking, you can get into these takedowns and Yiz uh, wants to get to the wrestling and the grappling in his own own, but even when Gabriel Santos is taken down, dude, he is so slick with those arm bars, those triangles. He would use those to try to get submissions, but also use those to get back to his feet because he's comfortable on his feet as well. I believe Gabriel Santos is going to be better everywhere. He's a tough dude. I know he got knocked out by David Onama, but David Onama is a fucking hard-hitting son of a bitch, right? And he was making David Onama work, was hurting David Onama with his hands, was, was threatening submissions on the ground. Gabriel Santos should be better, should be pretty cut and dry. He is going to be my pick. Let's move on to the next one. Andre Lima versus Felipe Dos Santos. Brazil versus Brazil. And you know that breaks my heart to my fucking core. These odds were a pick em, I believe, when it opened. Some people jumped all over Felipe Dos Santos as a pick em, thinking he might flip to a favorite. Big mistake there. I'll tell you what. If Andre Lima can make weight, which he missed weight, what, by five pounds in his last fight? He is a big dude at 125. I believe his style against the style of Felipe Dos Santos just sets up way too perfect. He's a Muay Thai, very precise, very powerful counter striker. And Felipe Dos Santos is good, but he's a shooter box guy that is constantly moving forward. And just like all those shooter box guys, they kind of just take a lot of damage and they try to overwhelm you. I believe that Andrew, uh, uh, Andrew Andre Lima style is going to be perfect. He's going to be sitting back, waiting for those counters, beat up the legs of Felipe Dos Santos, and his style is going to be perfect. I, I think I just said that four or five times. His style is going to be perfect for the come forward style Felipe Dos Santos he should be the cleaner striker and I believe he's going to get this done let's move on to the next one Isaac Dolgarian versus Brendan Murat Isaac Dolgarian first round submission let's move on to the next one OSP versus Ryan Spann listen if you guys are betting Ryan Spann at minus 300 let me know in the comments please can you let me know in the comments? I understand picking them. I understand thinking like, oh, this is, we have a chinny 41-year-old OSP versus big Ryan Superman Span. Ryan Span's got six knockout wins and 21 wins at the 30% knockout rate. He's not this big knockout guy. At his core, he's kind of a grappler. He's kind of a jujitsu type guy. He's a powerful guy, and he looks the part, but he's not cleaning people's clocks. I think this is going to be a back and forth fight, and if it goes to the ground, I believe OSP has the advantage on the ground we've also seen ryan span get chin time after time as well i see this as a fucking pick em fight i believe there's going to be more grappling than people think and on the ground i'm going with osp if this is a pure jujitsu match i'm going osp to win this fight so yeah i'm gonna take the dog here and osp people betting span at minus 300 he should win he's fighting a 40 fucking one year old but osp 
weathered the storm versus Kennedy, right? In that fight, it was kind of a low volume style from Kennedy and OSP was kind of be able to work through to get his own striking going. Ryan Spann, not a knockout guy, kind of a low volume. He'll stay in your face a little bit, but he doesn't have that big power. I think OSP is going to pull the upset here and I think he's going to be the champion by the, I'm not, I'm not going to be the champion, but I'm, I'm taking OSP here, especially with these with these odds. Let's move on to the next one. Hong Zhu versus Chris Taco Padilla. I think these odds are fucking insane. Nah. Yo, dog. I think these odds are fucking insane. This dude, Rong Zhu, has been in the UFC before. It seems like every time he's fought real competition, he's kind of not been able to rise up to that competition, left the UFC. Now he's been here before. They want to do kind of the same thing, right? Rong Zhu wants to get to the wrestling, wants to get to the grappling. Chris Padilla knows what he's doing in the wrestling, the grappling. You saw the beautiful takedowns in his last fight, the quick transition to the back to get that choke. I believe that this is a, a pick em fight. And whoever is going to be able to out dog and, and, and grind out those takedowns whoever in the second and third round is going to be able to defend the takedowns and get their own takedowns be a little bit more methodical be a little bit more gritty inside that apex cage is going to win that fight guess what i'll take chris taco badia 10 out of 10 times in a fight like that i don't think that there's any submission threat early for rong zoo i don't think there's any ko threat early and yeah he might be you know the aggressive one of the first round but after the first round i, I see this fight turning and chris badia doing what he needs to do he's waited a long time for this opportunity he showed up and showed out in his last performance and i think he does it again as a crazy underdog was it plus 240 something like that that is absolutely disrespectful for a guy in Chris Padilla, who knows how to wrestle, who knows how to grapple, and that's what Rong Zhu wants to do. I am taking Chris Taco Padilla. Let's move on to the next one. Trevor Peak versus Yanal, and everyone that's taking Yanal, I get it. Trevor Peak's not great, but he's a fucking dog. And guess what Yanal is not? He is not a high volume guy. So if you think that Yanal's gonna come in and finish Trevor Peak, then go ahead and play him. But if he's not gonna finish Trevor Peak, you think he's gonna out volume Trevor Peak? You think he's gonna have the bigger moments than Trevor Peak? You think he's just gonna take down and control the guy like Trevor? Trevor Peak's never gonna fucking stop. So if, if you, in my mind, if you know he's gonna win this fight, he better finish this guy. Because if he doesn't finish this guy, guess what? Trevor Peak's just gonna keep coming and coming and coming, and he's gonna have the bigger moments, and he will win this fight on the decision, or he will find a finish on you know. So the you know stuff. I guess I get because Trevor Peak's not that talented, but this is one of those fights where I think that he can just kind of dog this shit out because you know it's not a, a he will just kind of follow you around. He's not throwing a lot of volume, and I think his power is a little bit overrated as well. Trevor Peak is showing he can take a fucking shot. He's gonna be doing some wild shit. So I'm going. My name's Trevor Peak. I'm going Trevor Peak. Let's move on to the next one. Schnell versus Alessandro Costa. Lobo Jim Costa. I got to go Costa here, right? You see his losses look better and better every day. He knows how to box. He knows how to grab. Well, he's shown that he can take a shot as well. Matt Schnell just isn't that guy anymore. Was he 35 years old? He's probably on the tail end of his career. He's taking a lot of damage. He's a fun dude. He will probably get in there and scrap, and he's always going to be live on the ground, but even on the ground, Costa should be able to handle himself. He's a nice clean slick boxer and if he just waits for the shot he should find it. a lot of times these guys come in against a guy that's been chinned and a guy like Mike, Matt Schnell and they go too crazy to try and find the knockout they find themselves in trouble gassing all that stuff, type of stuff usually the small guys don't really gas this is uh, something that I would stress to Costa if he was listening the shot will find itself everyone else has kind of found that shot Pay, stay patient throw the normal com combinations once you feel comfortable extend the combination the shot will be there and you should be able to get this win I'm going Costa let's move on to the next one Kyle Nelson and Steve Garcia ain't no way in fucking hell I'm ever picking against Steve Garcia I, I mean there's, I just, I, there's, there's no way right am I gonna bet him at minus 190 minus 200 he puts himself in some very interesting situations where if you have money on him there's gonna be a pretty a couple moments where you're gonna be like oh no because I think in two of his last three wins or something he's pretty much lost the first round got dominated usually in the wrestling in the grappling which i don't think kyle nelson's going to do this is probably gonna be a firefight it could end early but this dude steve garcia he's coming in i know kyle nelson's had some success i think it's a little bit more of a flash in the pan than actual talented success that he can keep carrying into the 145 division steve garcia he is basically the 
talented version of Trevor Peak. Trevor Peak's a wild dude. He's a tough dude. Not a lot of like actual throwing combination talent. Steve Garcia is good on the ground. He's good with his combinations. He's got real power and he's an absolute fucking dog. There's no way in hell I'm ever picking or betting against a guy like Steve Garcia. Not yet. Not until he shows me anything different. I'm going with Steve Garcia. Let's move on to the co-main event. Co-main event time. We got Jessica Andrade versus Natalia Silva. I, I just don't get the Andrade love. Listen. I think both these ladies are beautiful. I've taken a picture with Andrade. Andrade was a, an incredible person. Her smile was just gleaming. She's Her eyes are beautiful. She was learning English, talking to me. She seems so sweet. As a person, Jessica Andrade is a fucking dime. No doubt about that. As a fighter, I just don't think she's very good. What are her wins? She beat up a Mackenzie Dern who had forgotten how to box. What Like, like a Lauren Murphy. She dumped a rose on her head. Right? I mean, if you look at her wins, they haven't really been against great great people and her losses every time she fights anybody knows how to fucking strike she gets fucking demolished i believe that this is going to look like the josie ann nunez fight versus what's her name from two weeks ago where it's just going to be Andrade just kind of willy-nilly following Natalia Silva around. Natalia Silva with those Sean O'Malley type sit-down counters, right? The little step-back slip, right hands. And Natalia Silva knows how to wrestle. She knows how to grapple. She's a big, strong girl. She can keep her taekwondo pace. Even if you're backing her up, she's shown that she will just bounce around on the outside of the octagon for 15 fucking minutes. I believe Andrade is going to get pieced the fuck up. And we could even find a finish from Natalia Silva, who, if you guys did not know... It's going to come in very, very motivated. On a more serious note, she did lose her sister like a few months ago, five, six, six months ago, something like that. Tragic, tragic thing. I believe she's going to come in more motivated than she's ever been and wants to make a statement for her sister and everything involved with that. So I'm going to tell you, Silva here. I like the pick. I think she could find it inside the distance. Andrade has shown in the past she's not the most durable person at times. I'm going to Natalia Silva to get it done. Let's move on to the main event. Main event time. We got Gilbert Burns versus Sean Brady. What the fuck is Sean Brady going to do? Huh? Oh, you like Sean Brady? Let me know in the comments what the fuck is he going to do to Gilbert Burns over five rounds. The fuck is he gonna do to Gilbert Burns? He, oh, he's just gonna he's gonna rest. He's he's gonna treat him like Kelvin Gaslam. Nah. Have you looked at the people that Sean Brady has fought? Fucking nobody. The first time he fought anybody that's anybody was below Muhammad. Got fucking smoked. Oh, but Jacob, he won the first round. Yeah, ha, ha, had they score the second round, right? He's not a better striker than Gilbert Burns. I know Gilbert Burns can get dropped by a jab, but he's a, he's a tough guy. And Sean Brady doesn't have like a fucking power jab. That he's gonna snap in there versus Gilbert Burns. What, Sean Brady's going to take down Gilbert Burns? Gilbert Burns, 50% takedown defense. He's been taken down four times in the last, like, 14 years. Twice by Damian Maia, which he won in the first round. He won that fight in the first round. Gilbert Burns beat Damian Maia. He got taken down twice by Chimayev, which he didn't even control those takedowns. Right? So you want to talk about percentages and takedowns and stuff. Now we're talking about cardio. Five-round fights. Gilbert Burns been there, done that. He, he's a guy that can go five rounds, no problem. He with a busted up shoulder, he's going five rounds of the wall. We've seen Sean Brady start slowing down in three-round fights. This is a monster step up in competition. I don't give a fuck about Gilbert Burns being 38, bum shoulder, whatever it is. This guy's been there. What the fuck is Sean Brady going to do to Gilbert Burns? Just ride him against the fence? No. Gonna outstrike him for, for, for three rounds? No. Gilbert Burns is gonna win this fight, and there's no doubt in my fucking mind. Let me know in the comments below how you think Sean Brady's gonna win this fight. Oh, you can knock him out? Yeah, fuck he is. He's gonna submit him? The fuck he is. Gilbert Burns is gonna win this fight. This has been the full card breakdown for USC Vegas 97. My name is Jacob, aka the Freckle Salamander. We want picks.com. It's only $10 a month. And if you don't like my picks, there's Angelo, there's Artem, there's other tools involved. It's only $10 a month. Sign up today. Get the sphere card included. Everything coming up. Let us prove to you that that value is worth it. We want picks.com. My name is Jacob, aka the Freckle Salamander. I'm out. Peace.